Hey, good morning, everybody. It is great to be back with you all again. It's the morning briefing with Friedman Adventures this lovely Monday morning. Great to be with you. Hope you're off to a great start to your week. There's some great fishing going on that we've got to get you caught up on. So much more to talk about, including tomorrow night live, Mauricio Lopez, who's the great young man who runs the Clemente out of there at Dana Wars Sport Fishing. He will be live on Friedman Adventures. Great kid, very knowledgeable about sport fishing. We want to find out how he got into the game and get his impressions of this year's season. And of course, pass along some great tackle tips to you all. And the best part of Freeman Adventures live shows is that they're interactive. You get to ask questions. So make sure you tune up on the Freeman Adventures YouTube channel on Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. for our live show. All right. Let's get into this because, as I said the other day, there are bluefin tuna everywhere. Are they biting everywhere? No. But, I mean, we've had boats like the Pursuit on a 22nd Street landing, coming back from Catalina Island, catching bluefin tuna. The Freedom on a 22nd Street landing, coming back from San Clemente Island and finding huge areas, vast areas of bluefin tuna breaking everywhere, getting one fish. We'll talk about that in just a moment also. There's a lot of bluefin, and it extends, of course, down the Baja Coast. So we like to start in Ensenada because we have so many good friends there who love to fish the pongas like I do. I love to drive across the border. And one of those other guys, or I should say family, who like to cross the border, head down to Ensenada and other parts of Baja, well, it's Albert Ponce, his wife Crystal, and their lovely family. Yesterday, they were out with Black Fin Charters in Ensenada, and they absolutely rave about those guys. And they didn't start by telling me about the fishing. They told me about Blackfin and the people who operate it. They're really great people, really concerned about your trip, and they do such a great job. Sounds like a lot of tender, loving care. Well, Albert and Crystal were out with those guys here yesterday. Nice trip, trolling around with the Mad Mac lures. They came up with three nice bluefin tuna one that was right around 100 pounds they had another fish that was 80 pounds and another bluefin tuna 30 pounds those trolling lures that sam de la torre from island fishing tackle in carson california introduced to you a few months back they were just starting to get red hot when we did that tackle tip with sam and i'm telling you right now those guys are still catching good amounts of decent bluefin tuna down there as evidence by Albert and Crystal's trip down there recently. They are also at times able to find a patty and of course there's a smorgasbord on the Baja patties right now. We're seeing Dorado, nice grade yellowtail. We're seeing yellowfin tuna move in and inhabit the patties. Not biting all that well yet but they're around. Big Bonita and uh, I'm telling you, it's looking really, really good. So south of the border, excellent fishing, looks great, and a nice trip for my friend Albert and Crystal. I'm so happy they got a great trip in with Blackfin Charters out of Ensenada. All right, let's move up to the San Diego fleet. And while there are a few misses on the kelps down there, most of the guys are having outstanding fishing. And yes, there are some five pound yellowtail on the kelp paddy. Some people have been putting a comma, comment up saying, hey, I'm seeing some smaller fish also. Yeah, there are some smaller ones, but the vast majority are these eight to 15 pounds. And it seems like you got fish in the 20 pound class. I'm telling you, I have seen it with my own eyes. You're seeing it with your own eyes from the deck of the Condor as they had another magnificent trip fishing the kelps. The grade for kelp patty yellowtails outstanding out of San Diego right now. Really nice fish eight to 15 with a lot of 18, 20 pounders, some 25 pound stuff. It's gorgeous fish, the Dorado. You get that smaller grade five pound stuff, but you get fish up to 20. Really interesting what's going on and it's setting up for a magnificent fall out of San Diego. This is like going back a few years with the exception of, yeah, you know what, albacore, okay? There should be some albacore here, but there is not any evidence of it at all. And my albacore prediction, of course, is just going, 
boom, it's going to explode in disaster again this year. Maybe. I'm hanging on. Still not sure that that's not going to happen because of all the anchovy. We still have cooler water offshore. We got the warm water inshore. That's where you get in the tropical and subtropical yellowfin, dorado, and all that stuff. But outside, there's still some cool water, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. Rick on the Ocean Odyssey, nice day and a half trip. He uh, limited out on yellowtail, nice grade for his 29 anglers. In fact, they did that by about 12 noon, and then Rick said, let's go out and see if we can find that YFT. So they went out and bumped around, looked for the YFT, ended up with 26 Dorado, and they also had six yellowfin tuna. We are seeing it. We saw it the other day on the Malahini. Uh, Sean Hardigan on the Mission Bell. I was talking to him about it. He's seen it. All these guys, Grande, San Diego, all those guys are seeing that yellowfin tuna, but it's a little reluctant to bite, which is not out of the ordinary. This happens almost every single season. Fish will move in, and then they kind of figure it out a little bit. They need to acclimate to the conditions, the new environment. I mean, they go from speaking Spanish in Mexico to coming up and having to learn English. So it takes them a little time to get used to their environment and start to bite. And of course, hopefully that's going to be anytime soon. Sea Adventure, I saw my friend Ricky Perez who runs the boat. It was so good to see him. Limits of Yellowtail on their most recent trip and some nice Dorado also. The San Diego on their 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. trip. Our next one on the Malahini Redemption Time, August the 19th. But the San Diego, this is the perfect kind of fall fishing. I love this smorgasbord. On the San Diego, they had 23 bluefin tuna, 30 yellowtail, 4 dorado, 4 yellowfin tuna. Really, really cool fishing. Now, when you are fishing down there for this kelp patty stuff, you're going to want 30 pound floral and maybe even 25 that gives you mostly plenty of pulling power gets you lots of bites www.opsonusa.com put in fa at checkout friedman adventures greg will send you a handwritten note and a free gift anyway you want to have that for sure now in addition to that you should have some 50 pound for the blue fan tuna and boy i'll tell you you know i'm telling you to bring 50 pound but the other day on the malahini that was hard to stop the fish we got into on the 50 pounds. Seems like the majority of the bluefin down there, that 20 to 40 pound stuff. But you can bump into that really big grade and start straightening hooks out like Steve Bermudez did the other day or just getting worked over like Freddie did the other day on our charter. I mean, if you have the heavy, bring it. If you had got a two-speed reel with 100 pound, I highly recommend you bring it because just a moment ago we talked about the pursuit, a three-quarter day or a full day boat out of 22nd Street running into the fish. The freedom, there are bluefin tuna everywhere. They are not biting everywhere, but they certainly are all over the place. Legend, two-day trip with limits of yellowtail, 36 on the Dorado. So nice hit there, no question about it. In terms of just full-speed bluefin trips, uh, long range boys are on that and doing quite well in terms of our 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. or even overnight. Most of these guys are on the kelp patties and I can't blame them. It's good fishing for almost everybody. It's fun fishing and it's that smorgasbord. You get to that variety of different species. It really is a lot of fun. Let's talk islands and we'll go back to Ensenada, talk to those Santos. Big calico bass on the Lucky Crab lures. That works really, really well in terms of taking those. Good barracuda fishing, some bonita rolling around there. Occasional little flash on the yellowtail also at Tolos. We move you up to the Coronado Islands, and there's been some excellent hits. Again, conditions have rebounded, and that place is biting with good yellowtail fishing. A lot of barracuda there, some bonita, and also some excellent calico bass fishing. Coronado Island's looking really good. San Clemente Island, you've got to deal with those sea lions. Seems like you've got to deal with them just about everywhere. And while it's not wide open, it's pretty difficult on some days at San Clemente Island. For the most part, you can come up with a yellowtail or two, choosing a hot bait, using the fluorocarbon, changing that bait regularly are all things that will help you catch a lot more fish. So keep that in mind, the freedom on a two-day trip. Talked to my friend Tino Valentine about it, and he said it was a little tough, but we had a really great trip. Two days, they had 27 yellowtail. Tino said he saw the best bass fishing he has seen all year long at SCI on their last two-day trip. He said it was like summertime calico bass fishing, whereas before, it's been scratchy, it's been difficult, but they ended up with almost a buck 30 on the calico bass, not 
bad at all. That's some pretty darn good shooting. They had a white sea bass that was about 18, 20 pounds, and they also filled the sacks with bottom stuff. And then coming home, Tino said they saw spot after spot after spot of bluefin tuna. Everywhere they were a little short on time, so they didn't get to hit it as hard as they would have liked. But one guy with a surface iron got a fish, hung a fish, fought the fish, and got about a 60-pounder on board the Freedom. They are seeing a ton of fish. If it ever settles and bites, it is going to be absolutely crazy. There is so much fish around. Uh, San Nicholas Island, uh, Santa Barbara Island, we've had wind out there starting to settle down. We'll have some nice weather here, and hopefully we'll see other guys starting to get a piece of that sea bass once again. They are getting a good piece of that sea bass up there in the Channel Islands. It's really good for several boats. Uh, one of them, the Endeavor, 20 guys. Limits of white sea bass doesn't surprise me one bit. You should go back in the archives, by the way, and search up the show we did with Tucker McCombs from Ventura Sport Fishing. He runs the Endeavor. I don't know if there's a guy who has higher work ethic, well, all these guys, you gotta admit, the guys in this sport fishing industry are awesome. They work so hard. It's really nice to see that kind of work and that ethic. These guys push themselves on a daily basis to make sure you get the best chance possible to catch some fish. But back to Tucker, he's also just such a capable fisherman and he's a machine. I mean, he just keeps going day after day after day. 20 guys, 60 white sea bass on the Endeavor. Huge fishing. Sometimes it's with the 10 ounce torpedo and your dropper looping. Other times you're running and gunning from sonar mark to sonar mark. It's just fun fishing and you use that sliding egg sinker. I like fluorocarbon. You know, when you're fishing in the dark, if you are, a lot of guys will say you don't need it. And I, I don't think you do. Greg Brown from Offson will tell you, you know, you don't probably need it, but I like the fact that it's abrasion resistant, that fluorocarbon. So if you do bump into something like a rock or any structure, you'll be covered. There's some really great fishing going on, no question about it. All right, let me jump you into the local situation, tell you that the premier down there out of San Diego, he went by us at the bait receiver the other morning, beautiful boat, limits of sand bass, nice hit for them on the SBs, that's good to see. For the most part, we're scratching away at rockfish, catching sculpin, and then we get some hits on bass and barracuda. In fact, nice seven pound bass that was caught and released the other day on board the Clemente out of Dana Warsport Fishing, a nice big one also on the Freedom that was caught and released. In fact, Tino said, going back to that trip just for a moment on the Freedom, they released most of their bass on board that trip. We move you up, uh, hoping that the barracuda will start to stick here in the San Pedro Long Beach areas, but those guys are just scratching at a few bass, catching sculpin for the most part, some rockfish and some barracuda. Best barracuda bite is still up there on the Island Spirit, where Cody Rogers has got a lock on it out of Ventura, and he's been hammering away at limits of barracuda. It's fun fishing on the surface iron. It really is the way to go, and you'll have a ball up there with Cody and his crew. They do a great job. That is Ventura Sport Fishing at 805-676. Three, four, seven, four. You definitely want to give them a shot. They are doing such a great job. Taking a look around, Twilight Trips, scratching at the bass. Monte Carlo's been out of 22nd Street, freelance. Some bass, sculpting, that kind of thing for the most part. Marina del Rey and Redondo, uh, mostly rockfish, but they do pick off some bass and occasional sea bass and halibut from time to time. That also has been intriguing and pretty darn good. So everybody, again, it's so good to be with you. There's a lot going on, and I think we're setting up for a really good offshore fall, okay? I mean, it's been a little bit hit and miss, and that bluefin this year certainly is not acting like it has in the previous years, where it just, I mean, you'd get 25 knots of wind, and it would bite. You would get a change in water temperature, and it would bite. It is way more fickle this year. It is way more teasing. You know, you roll up on it, you see all these fish like we did on the Malahini, and you just are like, what the heck do I have to do to get a bite? And then you do hook one and it's a big giant and you got your hands full, which is, I know a lot of you are looking for that kind of experience. So I think we're setting up for a really good fall with that Dorado and that Yellowfin, all that stuff moving up the Baja coast. And it should be really, really a great trip. August 19th is our next trip on board the Malahini. Then we have an August 31st, 
two-day trip on board the Amigo. Getting pretty full right now. A few spots left on that one. And then we have our final two two-day trips on board the Pride. And they've been red hot. If you want to fish on the Pride with Captain Sean Roberts, the fall is when you have your best weather, and that guy is an animal. I can't wait to do that. If you'd like our full charter list, you can go over to Facebook under Freeman Adventures or just send me a text. I'll shoot you the list, answer any questions that you might have. So you can do that by sending me a text to 657-227-6459. All right, don't forget Mauricio Lopez, Tuesday night at 7. That's going to be great. You can ask questions. I'll be back with any breaking news or anything else. And I'm thinking about running over to Island Fishing Tackle and Big Fish Bait and Tackle today to check out some new possible gear. All right, everybody, have a great day. As always, it's my pleasure to be with you all. Hope you have a wonderful start to your week, and I'll see you again really, really soon.